Well, good morning. This is Pastor Gene Simmons at All World Christian Center in Grants Pass, Oregon, and welcoming you to our uh, service this morning. So open your Bibles, and we're going to talk about two things. And uh, one of them is great. We love to talk about it. It's called faith. <laughs> the other one is patience, and it's most everybody's, uh, you know, like, oh, no. Not most unfavored topic because... Uh, let's face it, we are Americans and we have been raised up to want it now. And uh, not only do we want it now, we want it faster than what we had it last year. We want our next phone to go 60 G's instead of 5. Uh, we want our, want our cars to go 170 instead of just 70. And, uh, you know, let's face it, uh, all you got to do is look at the ads and everything is better faster and but guess what that doesn't impress god at all amen? Amen. amen he says he said follow those who through faith and patience inherit the promises okay uh so let's take a look at faith for just a minute one of the things about faith let's, let's read the, the the definition of it it says now faith is acceptance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I don't know about you, but I have faith that I will spend eternity in heaven. Amen. I've been there yet. I haven't seen it, and I would have a hard time really describing it other than what I can read in the in the book in the Bible. And there's going to be so much more that I've never that I can't even imagine. The Bible says God, God's got a, uh, He's got more than we can even imagine for us when we get there. Amen. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I have to have faith to get there. Amen? Amen. Okay, now the Amplified Bible kind of opens up that, that definition of faith a little bit. In Hebrews 11, verse 1, he says, Now faith is the assurance, the title deed, the confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. So basically, what it's telling us is that we have to trust God's word, that he's going to perform his word, uh, even though we don't see it happening in the natural. It was like Moses when he got to the, to the sea and the, the, the whole uh, Israel was about to be annihilated. He had to trust God to get him out. So what does God do? He opens up the sea. Anybody ever seen that happen? How many of you have been watched God open up the sea? You've seen it with Charlton Heston. Yeah, Charlton Heston. Yeah, well, I'll do this. Okay, but God did it. Amen? Amen. Amen. And uh, that's how faith works. We have to trust God. And sometimes God tells us to do something for our faith to work. Like he told, yeah, uh, put your, your rod in the water. When he did, okay? And then when uh, Israel went into, uh, went, went across the Jordan, the priest had to step in the water before God opened it up, right? Sometimes God asks us to do something so that, uh, that he knows that we really do believe him that's called testing your faith and that's not always a fun thing and sometimes it's tough you know I've shared some of the things that I've done as far as of God you know testing your faith can you believe that, that God even told Jesus to spit in the dirt and make mud and rub it in a guy's eyes so he'd be healed doesn't make any sense at all does it but did the guy get healed mm -hmm. yeah he did all right terrible <laughs> God may ask you to do something you don't understand in order to perform a miracle. Amen. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12 it says that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. This is what God's called leaders to do. To have faith and then patience. I don't know about you, but the patience is the hardest part, waiting for it to happen. You pray, you ask God, you receive it by faith, and then you trust God to perform it. 
Now, the thing about it is, is we don't understand all that God is involved in. Uh, sometimes God has to change hearts. He has to change nations. He has to do all kinds of things to answer our prayer. He has to get somebody to do uh, something in order for him to answer your prayer the way he designed it. Amen? Mm -hmm. And that means that we might have to wait. Now, I've got an old story I told about my, my daughter and her horses. <laughs> and uh, I won't tell you that one again. But I do know that, uh, that she prayed and she prayed and she prayed and thanked the Lord. I told her, so. I, taught, I taught her how to pray. And, and, and how faith works. And so she, she just kept praying every night. Lord, thank you for my horse. That's a girl and her, the barn and the, and the trailer and the tack and the food and everything it needs. To, and every night I'm sitting there listening to this. Uh, Lord. And God had to change some hearts before he could get answer Sarah's prayer. And the, mine was one of them because I didn't want a horse. But, you know, after we got horses, I ended up with three of them, and I loved them. I had a great time with them. I trained them and taught them how to, how to, uh, I taught, I had a, a baby colt. We raised it up. I taught it how to, how to, to ride it and, and how to do all the stuff. It was fun. And I was kind of sad when she decided that she didn't want horses anymore. When she got in high school, it wasn't quite popular enough. <laughs> but, guess what? I learned a, a, le a lesson there. And uh, when you pray and you ask God, you take title deed to what you have asked for, then that means you may just have to wait until God brings about the proper time and gets it done. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, through faith and patience. Everybody say patience. Patience. Uh, but you know something? Patience is in Galatians on the... the Fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, patience. Amen? Okay. So, the Holy Spirit in you will give you the patience that's needed to get your prayers answered if you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart and to run your life. Over in Titus 2, 2, it says, That the older men be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience, inherit the promises amen now i looked at that reverent temperate sound in faith in love in patience inherit the promises wow but then i looked up there at that older men i'm thinking what about the women lord is that did they misquote that i went through a hundred and over a hundred translations uh in, in, on the computer to find out that scripture to make sure it's talking about old guys. You know what it's talking about? Old guys. Old guys. So all of us old guys, we have to be sober. That means you aren't going out drinking and boozing it up anymore. Reverent. In other words, you have, you have to have, uh, act like you're in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Temperate. In other words, you aren't flying off the handle. Sound in faith, in other words, what you're believing for is scriptural. Okay, you're not believing for some uh, off the wall thing. And in love, and there's a key right there faith works by love. Amen. Love, in other words, so we have to have the right attitude in our heart. Okay, and then in patience, in other words, you haven't got a chance to get the job done. Don't get impatient. Now, one of the things that I've seen over my years of ministry is that a lot of times we lose a miracle or a healing because of our impatience. Uh, I watched it firsthand when I was doing a, a, a crusade in Trinidad, West Indies one time. Uh, a guy was sitting in the front row and, he, and they had to carry him in. They sat him on this chair. And... Uh, and uh, at, at the end of the service, I, I started praying for him. I prayed for the guy, and the power of God hit him, and he was healed. And he was just standing up and praising God. And I said, now I want you to walk down to the other end and turn around and come back. So he walked, and he went down the aisle. And on the way back, he had some pain. And then he 
lost his, his he, he lost his faith. Oh, I guess God didn't heal me. And guess what? They had to carry him back out. But in the meantime, God had done a miracle in his life. So, and I was just thinking, and the Lord showed me, he says, you know, uh, faith and patience. So when I pray and ask God for something, I take title deed to it, mine, okay? Just like I went out and ordered a, a 2023 car, and I paid for it. It's all paid for. I have a bill of sale. It's my car. It just hasn't been manufactured yet. I have to wait until they manufacture it and they ship it uh, here and then they deliver it to my house, right? That's called patience, okay? So it's my car, I have title to it, okay? Now it's the same thing when you pray for something, you have to take the title deed to it. Say, thank you, Lord, for it, it's mine. And then you receive it and then you thank the Lord until he gets it manufactured and delivered to your house. If that makes sense. Amen? Amen. So that's how uh, how faith and patience. And because of the way he's got it written there, these are all things that need we need to, to demonstrate in our life to inherit promises. Okay? Amen. How many of you know the promises of God are yes and amen? Yes. Amen. amen. And the Bible is full of them. We got uh, uh, Bruce has got a book out there with the promises of God in it, don't you? And the gifts. The gifts. The gifts of God. Okay. Well, uh, the promises of God are yes and amen. And he's got, uh, the, the Bible's full of them. <coughs> what we have to do is trust God to, to perform his promises. But if we want him to to answer our prayers, he want, we want to walk in those promises and receive them, then we have to line our lives up like God has asked us to do that. Amen? Mm -hmm. All you older men. <laughs> First Timothy 6 and 11 says, But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. There's another old man guy. <laughs> All you, you man of God. Okay? Now, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Now, a little message to you ladies. If you're looking for a husband, there's qualities in there you need to be looking for. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. You're not ever going to look for a husband. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It worked for some people. It doesn't work for other people. Okay. So, uh, my wife found one. And I'm so glad she did. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so, but... Uh, as a as a husband now, I have to pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience. I have to wait. I have to wait. Oh, but it's but the the result of patience is inheriting the promises. Amen. Mm -hmm. The gentleness. What do you say? Gentleness. Gentleness. Okay. If as a husband now, and uh, I don't I don't pursue those things. Let's say uh, I'm uh, rough and and push my wife around, am I going to receive the promises? Mm -hmm. you. you know, I have to be gentle. She has to know she is loved. Mm -hmm. Amen? Okay? Now, here's something that I do. I, I, I do it every day, probably, I don't know, 10 times or more. I tell her I love her. But you know something? I can tell her I love her every day, but if I don't demonstrate it in the way I behave, then... Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't do any good. It doesn't accomplish anything. But what it does, when I, I say, uh, uh, when I tell her I love her, it reminds me I love her. It reminds God I love her. It reminds the devil I love her. And anybody else that's listening. And uh, I tell my kids every time I talk on the phone with them. Whether, I don't care how, how old they are now, some of them are grandma. My, my daughter's a grandma. I tell her I love her mommy. <laughs> She says, it's a good thing, Dad. Or I'll kick your butt. <laughs> okay. Second Thessalonians 3 and 5. It says, Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. 
And that, you know, I have the patience of Christ kind of underlying there. Now, God will direct us into that patience. And I stopped to think about, was Jesus actually patient? He realized that for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes on him. Okay, so basically we have, we have this wonderful uh, opportunity to spend eternity in heaven. Uh, and Jesus had patience with me. Now, I didn't get saved until I was about 30. You know, I knew who Jesus was, and I, I went to church when I was a kid. Uh, but it wasn't until I was about 30 years old that I really surrendered my life to him. I can honestly say he had patience with me. And he still has patience with me because I'm still not, I haven't arrived yet. <laughs> Even the Apostle Paul says I haven't arrived Yet I'm pressing on towards the mark of the high calling. Okay? Now, one of the things about it is uh, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I don't care who you are. You have things that come in front of you that sometimes you just make the wrong decisions. Or maybe you think thoughts that are, are, are not. I was looking at the, the your thoughts and intents of your heart. Maybe you want to do evil to somebody. You just don't do it. But you got it in your heart. And so you have to repent and ask God to, to, to you pray for that person, forgive them, let them go, amen? And then you move on. And you pray blessings on them. Okay? Over in Thess 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, he says, Remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our Lord and Father. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. There's two scriptures right there that talk about Jesus had patience with us. Amen? And he still does. He's waiting for us to grow. He wants us to go, grow and go, grow up. Amen? And we say, well, you know, I'll do that, Lord. But then we, when the time comes, you know, we, we change our mind or we get distracted or we do something. Amen? But God wants us to press on towards the mark of the high calling. Amen? Mm -hmm. He wants us to diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Diligently. Amen. Over Colossians chapter 1, verse 10, it says, uh, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all the might, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long-suffering with joy. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Oh, just think it. Because of your faith and what Jesus did on the cross, God has made you uh, a partaker in the inheritance that he has for you. We are joint heirs with Jesus to all that God's created you man, think about all of God's created and how intricate it is. I'm, I'm, ex I'm excited. I'm looking forward to being on the other side so I can start finding more out about what God's done. And see, how, how, did he, how did he create the heavens and the earth? How did he cast the stars out there with his hand? Mm. How did he get my blood to quit, to, to, to quit bleeding when I cut myself? There's a, there's a miracle right there. Mm. I mean, God created so many things. Just think about how many of you in here are breathing right now. Okay? If it wasn't for oxygen in the air, we'd all be dead. Okay? How many of you had water, drank some water this morning? Okay? How many of you drank something? God, God made the water that you boiled your coffee in. That's right. He, he made the coffee too, by the way. And he kept you awake so you wouldn't fall asleep on the freeway. Amen. <laughs> so anyway, here we have, it's a great scripture right there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, being fruitful in every good work. We can ask ourselves, does that describe me? And increasing in the knowledge of God. Am I studying to show myself a work on Riley dividing the word of truth? Or am I just sitting around washing the tube? Hopefully everything's going to turn out okay. Believe it or not, God has a plan for us. 
and he wants us to uh, increase in our knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power. In other words, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts 1 8 says, You shall be you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be witnesses unto me throughout the whole world. Amen? Amen. Okay? So, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, for all well, oh, there's that word again. For all patience and long suffering with joy. It's hard when you're waiting for God to answer your prayer to still be joyful. You're know, upset with God. Oh God, you're just so little oh, cousin. Oh, oh. You know, you the, joy, the, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Amen. The joy of the Lord. Romans 15 and 4. For whatever things uh, were written before we uh, were written for our learning that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning. The Old Testament is there for our learning. Mm -hmm. The New Testament is there for our learning. Uh, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. I don't know about you. I am trusting that Jesus is my soon coming king. I know the Bible says these things are written that you may know that you have eternal life. Yeah. So I know that I have eternal life because I've done what the Bible tells me to do. Okay? And I just thank the Lord for it. Amen? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I have to wait patience. Jesus hasn't showed up yet as far as, as uh, the, our, the king in the air. But he shows up by his Holy Spirit in our presence. Mm -hmm. and that's the reason why I'm still here. Mm -hmm. I'm here because of his presence. Amen? Mm -hmm. So stay in tune with him. Trust him. Here's one you guys all know. Uh, we're going to go through it. This is a parable. Jesus speaking. He said, the parable of the sower explained. Verse 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. Verse 14. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on good ground are those who have heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I underline the word, the, the different kinds of ground. Mm -hmm. And guess guess who determines what kind of ground you are? You do. Mm -hmm. You determine whether you're good ground and you're going to produce fruit, or you're, uh, you know, you heard the word and it was good, you, you jumped and shouted, and then as soon as the temptation came, you went the other way. Yeah. Okay? So uh, the, the first ground was was a rock wayside. or wayside mm -hmm. always by the wayside hear the word okay uh, the ones on the rock are those who they hear the word receive it with joy hey that's a good word and these have no root who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away okay how many of you know at least one person that has heard the word received it but then fell away Okay. You need to keep them in prayer. Mm -hmm. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with, here's the things that try to take the word out of your heart. Cares, riches, pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. Now here's one of the things that, that really helped me out a lot. Uh, I realized that I couldn't run anybody else's life. I raised four kids. 
I, I couldn't run their life. Okay, once they got out of, out of the house, they were then, you know, the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go, and when he gets old, he won't depart from it. So I had to trust God to take my kids through all the temptations and the stuff that they were going to go through. And they did. They went through it. But what I had to do is I had to cast all of my care over onto him, for he cares for me. So I just said, okay, God, my kids are your kids. You said you'd take care of them, so hallelujah. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm going to rejoice and praise to God. And whatever happens down the road, it's your business because they belong to you. And you know what happened? This huge weight on my shoulders for all the problems that, my, that I had just lifted. And now I look out there. And uh, you know what? You know what I have to do with my grandkids now? My kids, grandkids, and great-grandkids? You tell them you love them. I just love them. You tell them you love them. I love them, man. <laughs> they know Grandpa loves them. I act like I love them, and I tell them I love them. Amen? And I tell them Jesus loves them, too. <laughs> Jesus loves them a lot more than I did, because I didn't die on a cross for them. Amen? Mm -hmm. So basically, there's a key right there. Uh, and then I have to have patience while I watch all of how all the trials and the things that they go through to get to the ends of their life. Amen? Mm -hmm. So I can only tell you, God is a good God and he answers my prayers. Yeah. Yes. And I can still now walk. Now what I did here is I wrote out a prayer for all of us to pray. And uh, I'm going to ask you to Pray this prayer with me, and uh, we're going to trust God that he's going to work through us and, and give us the patience and the faith that we need to be fulfilled in what he's called us to do. Mm -hmm. So pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I want to thank, thank you for your word, for your word. Grace, grace, mercy, mercy blessings, 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 and patience with me. With me. Thank you for filling me. Thank you for filling me with your Holy Spirit. With your Holy Spirit. And producing fruit through me. And producing fruit through me. Please burn your word in my heart. Please burn your word in my heart. So that I can win the battle with joy. So that I can win the battle with joy. I thank you for faith and patience. Thank you for faith and patience. So that I can inherit your promises. So that I can inherit your Please fill my heart with your word. Please fill my heart with your word. So I can speak it. So I can speak it. With anointing. With anointing. And power. And power. So that you are glorified. So that you are glorified. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Now if you just pray that prayer in your heart, you got some good stuff on the way. Good stuff coming. Amen. Amen. God wants you. He want he he wants to to give you all of the promises. The promises of God are yes and amen. amen. So thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. Thank you for touching our families and our loved ones and our nation and our city and all the things that we're trusting you for because they all belong to you. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So we just want to bless the Lord and uh, for those people that are, are, are out there and in YouTube land. We want to invite you to come to All World Christian Center. We are at 237 Southeast G Street, downtown Grants Pass, across from Safeway. And our services are at uh, 10 a.m. on Sunday and 7 p.m. on Wednesday. So we're going to invite everybody to come. And uh, we have a good Bible study on Wednesday night. And we spend some time in just praising the Lord. And uh, we have a good time. This is a family uh, that loves Jesus. So, welcome and uh, if anybody is out there and that it doesn't live by but you would like to support us, uh, you can send a check to All the World Christian Center at P.O. Box 103, Grants Pass, Oregon, 97528. And you can write a check to All the World Christian Center. And uh, praise the Lord. Well, we could use all the help we can get. Because <laughs> we want to take the gospel into all the world. So, God bless you all, and thank you.